15 weeks out from the Van Cooper Pro. I know last, if you watched my last YouTube, I talked about the Texas Pro. Well, after I made that video, I decided to do Vancouver. I'll be conditioned enough, which we can see here in my, these are my fasted update picks. Moving into this holding phase, I've sitting around, just maintaining around this uh, 252, 253 spot in the morning for the past week. So i uh, pulled down gear now for coming up on, on two weeks. And I was gonna pull food down. I, I mentioned my last video, I brought, say I was gonna bring carbs down 50 grams on my train days. However, I was just gonna see how it goes <laughs> and see if weight kind of holds and if the visuals hold and they have. So just kept the same diet, just with a little bit lower gear and holding well. So in one more week, I will start prep at 14 weeks out. Today, we are with Renee, who's somewhere back there. There she is, she's all blurred out, you can't see her. But we're training legs. So we're gonna do a leg session today. Uh, today's my pendulum squat. So focus on quads this section. So I hit pretty much all my quad work first and go into some hamstring work. Hamstrings are our stronger points, so they come second in the session. But we'll jump in today and kind of update you along the way. So leg extension is up first, doing three sets here on the prime leg extension. Loading wise, we have majority of the weights put up top. So it's heaviest, almost in the lengthen range, starting off It's kind of why this leg extension is great, but I want to get some like quality stimulus right away for my quads without a lot of systemic fatigue. Um, for me, it's been more of a safety thing because then I can do this and then go into my squat pattern and I will require less load to do that. Um, now, am I getting still some quality stimulus, but there is some fatigue presence, so probably not the most stimulus possible, but I think the trade-off there in being safe uh, outweighs it. So, do three sets here, staying in this like 15-ish rep range, and yes, Renee and I wear matching, matching clothes. <laughs> that was not planned. All right, moving on to pendulum squat. It's a beast. You know, this is like, I consider this like a hold phase, right? So I don't, I don't like calling a maintenance phase. I think it uh, seems unmotivating for people. Like you can't make progress just because gear is coming down. And the idea of this phase, why I call it hold, is hold tissue. Kind of like <laughs> when you see like, the old Spartans or uh, you know knights in battle. It's like hold the line, right? So we're trying to like fight to hold the tissue. So um, with my training, I do an extra rest day, right? So one of my push pull, both my one push and one pull session have condensed down to an upper session. So volume total for the week is lower with more rest days. But what I want to do is uphold that stimulus within my sets with high effort. Um, that's not going to drop off. Some people. Their gear drops and they lose all the motivation to like keep their sets stimulating and challenging. And you don't train as hard, you're not as motivated. And in turn, that stimulus drops off. And what happens? You don't hold the tissue. So train hard. There's no reason to let your effort 
that you've standardized in your sessions move just because gear has transitioned down slightly. Just in that session with my leg switching, like I went up another 25 pounds and match reps, so you can still make progress. Like right when gear comes down, you're, you're still super physiological. So anyway, on our pendulum squat, we're gonna do two sets here. I still keep the reps a bit higher, so hit around like 10, 12, something like that. Um, depending on how the first set goes, I drop weight or I'll keep the weight the same if I end up hitting on the higher end of the, the rep range. I'm definitely not going to get as many as I thought I was going to get. I was ready to drop the camera and help you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can get nine. I got seven. Well, I'm just going to show you this guy. I'm here to make sure you don't stop. It's okay. You're not going to die on this because you're just going to bottom out. That's right. You're just going to get stuck. Hold the muscle. Okay, we survived our pendulum squat. Barely. Barely. Renee almost uh, bombed on the last one. Stuck. Yeah, so. But anyway, on those, man, if you make them really quality, if you watch us do them like slow, control the eccentric down, 
That pendulum really makes, makes you swing hard in the bottom, so control it. Pause, then press out. Be massive quad stimulus that way. <laughs> so anyway, for next, I'm gonna do a seated leg curl. So something very braced. Do hamstring work before I go to my leg press so I can let a little bit of this systemic mind-blowing fatigue dissipate and some of the local fatigue in my quads uh, <laughs> drawn off so I can have some quality in my leg press. So I'll we'll put some hamstrings in, do a, a seated hamstring curl. Big thing here with this one is still like making sure that knee lines up with that pivot point, then bracing the core so you don't have that anterior hip tilt as you're leg curling. A cue I like is as you curl, drive the knee up into the pad. It really helps prevent someone trying to use like hip extension and, and kicking the, the hips back. So do three sets on the C leg curl and about 10 to 15 reps. No pendulum squat. <laughs> Still hard though. <laughs> All right, finish off the seated leg curl. Now moving to Roger's hip press. So, I like the Roger's hip press, and I use maybe you've seen it on Instagram. Yoga blocks. Only time I do the closest thing to yoga. <laughs> so use these to elevate the hips. And how that pendulum swings, it kind of swings up as you're coming down. So what you might notice is that line of force, it kind of it'll hit you about mid-spine. It'll make you feel like your hips want to roll up. And you might feel a lot of pressure in the lumbar because of that. If you move your hips upward, that line of force will now kind of run a little bit closer to the hip, the sacrum. And for one, it won't roll the hips up as much, but also you'll gain a bit more range of motion at the knee as well. So you can create a little bit more of a, a quad dominant hip press. But just the way it moves, it's going to bring some glute in as well. So um, I, I like the movement because it's just moving to a more braced position. And I can do some single leg work. So it will challenge like the adductor and a little bit more of the glute medius is to stabilize the knee. But also can prioritize my left leg. My left leg's a little bit um, a little bit smaller than my right, just, just a bit. So I start with that leg. We'll do two sets here. And aiming for that 10 to 15 rep range. Equal rest times between legs, so no, no rushing between legs. And then we'll have our last exercise to do after the hip press. Think, I guess things to add about my update. Um, for one, not making any changes this week, just holding here steady. We'll pull labs at the end of next week, so at some point I might be able to talk to you about that. No change in cardio, no change in steps. Um, just kind of boring as far as update updates go, and uh, that's that's really it, everybody. Renee move over to a split squat on the Smith machine for her work just because that's within her needs for something a little bit more glute biased. She still has a front foot elevation so this is like more her a little bit more quad focus but either way you can have a bit of balance of both for her.
Okay, last exercise of the day, a dumbbell RDL. Put the RDL at the end of the session. For one, hamstrings is my, a little bit on the lower end of priority, like I mentioned before, but already trained hamstrings with a seated leg curl. So there is some fatigue there. So I can, for one, not need as much weight to do it. Also, many people say like with their RDL, oh, I feel it in my back, I don't feel it in my hamstrings or my glutes. Treat your RDL nearly like it's an isolation exercise. I see people using too much weight, trying to turn this into like a strength movement, like a power lifter, and it should be very accurate. So that's why I say like an isolation movement. So I, I control this slow eccentric, slow concentric. So I see a lot of people, they get to the bottom, they control it, but then they have this slight shift in mechanics that comes to a more of a mechanical advantage and will remove the loading from the hamstrings or glutes and just pull, push the hips closer within that line of force so it's easier to lift. And in turn, you're not getting as much stimulus out of it. So control it. Almost have a pause in the bottom, then control with a two second cadence on the way up and you'll, you'll get a lot more out of this movement. So I do at the end because I can keep the loading comparatively light to what if I was to do it at the beginning of a session. And I'll do two sets here within that eight to 12 rep range. And that will wrap up my leg day. Hope you all enjoy. Next week will be the last week of my uh, dial back, my four days per week split. Maybe I'll film my upper day because that's kind of a unique session. Anyway, thank you everybody for tuning in and we'll talk to you next week.